BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And hello and welcome to this special weekend episode of Black Box Online Radio. On the weekends, I've been doing a regular segment called Zodiac Killer New Discovery The Moraga Letters where I was interacting with someone named Sphere the Cube, that's his YouTube name, as well as um, using the nickname Sphere, which I'll be referring to him as throughout the duration of this recording, and he stated that he might be in the possession of documents that could have been written by the Zodiac Killer. And to be fair, he is in possession of them, but was this author actually the Zodiac? That's what we're trying to find out. And not only that, but there are multiple members of the family that could have contributed to some of these pieces of writing. But that isn't going to be the focus of today's episode, because this series has expanded into something that is so much bigger than just, did the Zodiac Killer write these little notes? Sphere has not only proposed a new Zodiac Killer suspect, Robert Volvens. He has also listed several unconfirmed Zodiac crimes that may have actually been committed by the real Zodiac Killer. And in a previous episode, I was talking about some of them, such as the murder of Larry Hargis from San Diego, as well as the murder of Cosette Ellison. And in this episode, I will be exploring the question... Was Laura Jean Dugan a Zodiac Killer victim? And to help us out, we're going to go over to an article from Media.com that was written by Deborah Buck called Who Killed Laura Jean Dugan in 1972? Laura Jean Dugan was born on September 26 of 1957. Her mother was named Betty. Her father was unnamed because Betty and her father divorced very early on after Laura Jean was born, and then they ended up moving to Montana and... Betty married a guy named Bill who was working for Northwest Airlines, but ultimately that marriage did not last either, and then they divorced in 1971. Laura Jean was a tomboy, plain and simple. She was very adventurous and extremely so, never afraid of anything, Betty told Greg Tuttle of the Billings Gazette in 2006. Laura Jean Dugan liked to catch butterflies, she chased boys with snakes and creepy crawlers, she caught bees in her hands and turned them loose on people. After their divorce, that's, um, with Bill, Laura Jean changed. She became more assertive, which wasn't like her. Laura Jean wasn't happy living in Montana. She missed Minnesota and once ran away in an attempt to go back. Right before Christmas of 1971, Laura Jean hitchhiked to Forsyth, about 90 miles northeast of Huntley, but called home from the sheriff's office. Betty drove through the snowstorm to pick up her daughter. Unfortunately, it was not the last time Laura Jean ran away. April 7th of 1972. There are two versions of what went on in the Dugan household on April 7th of 72. Betty and Sherry, that's Laura Jean's older sister, each remember the morning differently. Sherry said that Betty and Laura Jean argued about a man that Betty was dating. Laura Jean liked him and wanted her mother to marry him. However, Betty told Laura Jean that she would never marry the man. Laura Jean left home in a huff. She walked Ella to the street corner where she got on the school bus. Ella is the younger sister. Sherry watched her sisters from a window and then left home to catch her own school bus. She never saw Laura Jean again. Betty recalled in 2006 that Laura Jean asked to stay home from school that day because she wasn't feeling well, but Betty made her go to school. The two argued over Betty's decision before Laura Jean left the house. Laura Jean rode the bus to school but never made it to class. Apparently, she handed her books to one of her friends and took off up to the freeway. A school bus driver claimed to have seen Laura Jean walking toward the highway, but what happened after that is a mystery. Betty wasn't initially worried when Laura Jean did not return that day because of her previous runaway attempt. But when Betty hadn't heard from her daughter after two days, she called the police to report her missing. April 30th of 1972. On Sunday, April 30th of 1972, a rancher checking his cattle on the land about one-fourth of a mile from Interstate 94 in the Badlands community west of Medora, North Dakota, found the body of a young girl under an old cedar tree a few steps from a well-worn cattle path. A cross necklace was dangling in the tree. The girl was clad only in an open jacket. 
Billings County Sheriff Ted Cornell had no idea who the victim was. There was no ID, no personal belongings on the victim, so he took pictures and sent them to law enforcement agencies in Montana and North Dakota. Laura Jean was then identified after the autopsy. On May 2, 1972, the body was identified to Laura Jean Dugan, Bill Dugan, that's the uh, stepfather, Betty and a friend of Betty's, flew to Bismarck to identify the body and made arrangements to return it to Montana. The autopsy revealed that Laura Jean Dugan was stabbed once in the abdomen. That did not kill her. The cause of death was strangulation. Marks on her wrist suggested that Laura Jean had been tied up before death. While there was no evidence of sexual assault, police and her family believed she was raped. And I'm already sure some of you are wondering, well, this might be a tragic story, and rest in peace to Laura Jean Dugan, but how is this connected to the Zodiac Killer murders that occurred in California in the 1960s and possibly 70s? Because Laura Jean Dugan is from the northern Midwest, maybe you could say she's from Minnesota or Montana, and she has been somewhat of a runaway, so who knows her exact uh, thought process before she died. However, she's found dead in the Badlands region, and I was asking those questions myself to Sphery, who responded by saying that there are a couple reasons why he believes that there could be a Zodiac connection in this. In 1974, the Zodiac allegedly mailed the Badlands card, and Laura Jean Dugan is found in the Badlands. Now, it is an unconfirmed communication, there are several Zodiac communications that came in 1974. Almost everyone accepts that the Exorcist letter from January of 74 is an authentic Zodiac piece of writing. But then there's the Count Marco letter, the SLA letter, and the Badlands card. But hypothetically, if that were authentic, is that not cluing somebody in to the murder of Laura Jean Dugan? And this also ties into something about the Zodiac Killer's timeline. The Zodiac Killer committed murders in California in 1968 and 69, and then there's Zodiac activity all the way into 1971. Some people think the abduction of Kathleen Johns and the uh, disappearance of Donna Lass were the Zodiac Killer, but certainly the Zodiac Killer is writing letters in 1970. I mean, all throughout 1970, whether it's the Z13 and Z32 ciphers to the Halloween card, and then once you get into 1971, you have not only other cards, but also the Pleasanton letter, but then there's a halt in Zodiac activity, the very famous halt in Zodiac activity from 1972 to 73, and this has been a mystery to people in itself. So many people are trying to explain why did the Zodiac Killer cease activity in 1972 and 73? And in the theory put forward by Sphery, his suspect, Robert Volvins, was in California. He was a college student at the time, and simply he moved back to the Midwest where Robert Volvins was originally from. I mean, it's just that he relocated to the Midwest, and he did not stop committing crimes. And an example of a crime that he committed would have been the 1972 murder of Laura Jean Dugan. Then he returns to California in 1974, and Sphery did share the letter with me that states this, that Robert Volvins has returned to California in 74, and then the Zodiac activity has restarted. But to hear some comments from Sphery on the Badlands card, I also think that the Badlands card signed a citizen. Dugan's body was located in the Badlands across from Roosevelt Na Park. That's uh, Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And the speech by Theodore Roosevelt on July 4th, also the date of the Blue Rock Springs murders, references the pride of the citizens of the Dakotas. And it is not an accident when Roosevelt put the Dakotas on the map and founded the National Park System and won the Nobel Peace Prize for negotiating with... The Mikado of Japan. While the Zodiac references the Mikado frequently by Gilbert and Sullivan as a critique of England, to me this seems consistent with the Zodiac's love of layering clues and a system. The Mikado of Japan would not only be a, an allusion to the Zodiac's war of illusion. And I think the important thing to remember here is that this is 
something that is indeed heavily referenced by the Zodiac Killer. The Mikado by Gilbert and Sullivan, a prime example of this would be the Zodiac Killer's Little List Letter, which badly interprets the Mikado, but I previously mentioned the Exorcist Letter mailed in 1974. That also clearly represents the Mikado, saying, um, he plunged into the billowy wave at the suicide's grave, titwillow, titwillow, titwillow. That is from one of the songs in Gilbert and Sullivan's The Mikado. So, is this um, all just some way of trying to tie things in together, or dropping like a trail of breadcrumbs, or some type of reference that if you put the clues together you could figure it out that this person is not only committing crimes and leaving little hints to the meaning behind them, but there are also mathematical similarities involved with the orchestration of these crimes. And at first, um, when we were discussing this, Sphiri shared something with me about mathematical similarities connecting the murder of Laura Jean Dugan to that of the Zodiac Killer, and I wasn't quite sure how to respond to it immediately, so I asked for some clarification, and Sphiri created an image for this episode where he shows that the not only the murder of Laura Jean Dugan in the Badlands area outside of Medora could have been formed on a, a line going all the way to San Francisco. I mean, that's not... Firstly, let, I'm going to share you my process on how I learned about this. It takes two points to make a line segment, right? I didn't learn anything in geometry class other than this. Any two points can make a line segment. So first, Sphere shows that there's this line segment from North Dakota to San Francisco. I'm like, well, that can always exist. I mean... Any two points, West Virginia to San Francisco can have a line segment in a straight line. But then, what he showed me was, this is an angle of 225 degrees, or pi 4 radians, and it goes through Lake Tahoe, the site of the disappearance of Donna Lass. So, the Zodiac Killer talked very frequently about using radians. He said a solution that he had concerned radians on all inches along the radians, albeit for the location of a bomb, rather than the, um, the site of a crime that was planned in 1970 or 72. But he's talking about the location of a bomb. And Sphere has also showed how Moraga, California, the namesake of this series, goes through the Zodiac Killer's uh, first radian, from Mount Diablo, and that Moraga was the place where it all should have been, um, a place that could have been overlooked, so to speak. But then you have this all matching up in a line, Lake Tahoe, where the Donna last crime was, the SFPD Moraga branch, and not only that, this also ties into another Zodiac crime that I was talking about last week, possible Zodiac crime, and that is the murder of Cosat Ellison, Again, another girl who has been abducted and her body has been moved and found in a different location, quite similarly to Laura Jean Dugan. So, these crimes are mostly happening in somewhat of a straight line. However, let's look at some challenges to this particular type of thinking. And first, Laura Jean Dugan was not only stabbed, but strangled. The Zodiac Killer did not strangle his victims. Prime example of this would be the Lake Berryessa stabbing when Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were tied up and stabbed. The Zodiac Killer could have easily strangled both of them. Cecilia Shepard had ten stab wounds in her body. She was defenseless. Even though Brian Hartnell was much bigger than her, he had been stabbed multiple times, and the Zodiac Killer was most likely not a frail, weak individual, he most likely had some type of capability in regards to strength. I mean, we're talking about some guy that might have been six feet tall, 200, 220, 225 pounds. He probably could have applied a great deal of force to somebody like Brian Hartnell, who would have been tied up and bleeding. But the Zodiac Killer did none of that. And I had the opportunity to bring up this question to Sphiri. What do you? How do you account for all of these differences in the Zodiac Killer's operation? And he pointed out that I've I've said this on the channel 
many times about how the Zodiac Killer doesn't make sure the victims are dead. The Zodiac Killer doesn't seem to want to touch the bodies after they've been uh, attacked or stabbed in the case of Lake Berryessa. With the exception of Paul Stein, with the exception of murdering Paul Stein on October 11th of 1969, because in that particular case, the Zodiac moved Paul Stein's body. He, Paul Stein was killed in a taxi cab, and the Zodiac is moving his body around. He is taking Paul Stein's wallet, keys, cuts off a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. He is handling the body of Paul Stein, but not really at the other crime scenes. And, I mean, the Zodiac isn't even making sure that the other victims are dead, like Brian Hardnell and Cecilia Shepard and Mike Michaud. Cecilia Shepard did pass away from her injuries, but two days later in the hospital... How, how how do you attribute a crime like the stabbing and strangulation of Laura Jean Dugan to the Zodiac Killer? And the response that I got was, the Zodiac Killer wanted to show that he had no pattern, that he had no consistent mode of operation. I mean, yes, Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs are both shootings where David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen are murdered, and then Darlene Fern and Mike Michaud are both shot, and they're both committed by gun. But then at Lake Berryessa, the victims are tied up and stabbed. Then at the Stein murder, a single man is killed. There is no woman present. It's not at a lover's lane. The Zodiac was trying to show that he had no pattern, that he didn't have any predictable way of operating. He'll just commit crimes to kill, and it's not because of any specific pattern of behaviors that he wants to use. The second point is... The Zodiac had no problem touching Paul Stein because he didn't have the same type of animosity and fear of rejection that he had toward heterosexual couples. The only time he's really handling a victim's body is when it was the victim who was a lone male. And then maybe, just maybe, the thought process of some type of guy who is dealing with a lot of heterosexual animosity a guy who's dealing with some type of rejection from society, he's some guy who's been to college and he's learned a few things, but he still can't figure out women, is going to be looking at somebody and thinking, well, he's beneath me, or even if he's on the same level as me, he means nothing to me. He is just an ordinary person. But even though, even though the Zodiac Killer murdered victims at Lake Herman Road, Blue Rock Springs, and Lake Berryessa, they were together, male and female. Man and woman were present. The Zodiac is still thinking that there's something that is rejecting him from that, that he is just afraid to touch the bodies of people who are involved in these either romantic settings or male and female settings because he feels inadequate. And I think that that's somewhat of a defendable interpretation because we are looking at the psychological process of someone whom has not yet been identified, and it is an explanation all the same about how somebody has provided a reason why the Zodiac Killer didn't touch the bodies of the victims at the Lover's Lane incidents, but did touch the body of the victim of a lone male, and then going after younger women like Cosette Ellison, younger women like Laura Jean Dugan, and this goes to show that the Zodiac Killer may have had no pattern at all, may have just wanted to commit murders, didn't even care if they were done in by any particular method, but to uh, fuel its own excitement, the Zodiac Killer did mail the Halloween card that says, by rope, by knife, by gun, by fire, so showing that he possibly, possibly wanted to commit crimes in different ways, and the murder of Laura Jean Dugan would have been committed by knife as well as strangulation, though. So, I mean, there, there are a couple ways you could view the situation. But because we also want to provide challenges, another challenge I would propose is that you cannot rule out an opportunistic predator. These types of people exist. These types of people are very real. And somebody who is going to view Laura... Jean Dugan is just a woman who was, a young woman rather, who was alone in a particular area, and the Zodiac Killer, or sorry, 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 I'll overstate that. Laura Jean Dugan is alone in, in some isolated area, 
and an opportunistic predator murdered her. Some guy just saw a vulnerable woman and attacked her. We have to keep other possibilities in mind. But because there is a Zodiac communication that is connected to the Badlands, and Laura Jean Dugan was murdered very close to the Badlands, I also want to have a read at that. I will read the text of the Zodiac Killer's Badlands card, but bear in mind this is an unconfirmed communication, as well as some of the others from 74. Sirs, I would like to express my consternation concerning your poor taste and lack of sympathy for the public, as evidenced by your running of the ads for the movie Badlands, featuring the blurb. In 1959, most people were killing time. Kit and Molly were killing people. In light of recent events, this kind of murder glorification can only be deplorable at best. Not that glorification of violence was ever justifiable. Why don't you show some concern for public sensibilities and cut the ad? A, a citizen. Yes, it is signed a citizen. Now, this is a possible Zodiac communication, but you'll notice that in 1974, the Zodiac doesn't seem to be too big on including the name Zodiac and the letter saying, this is the Zodiac speaking. And this also ties in to um, a theory that some people have that's even on ZodiacKiller.com that in 1974, the Zodiac wasn't reinventing reinventing himself as a movie buff, not only talking about the movie Badlands here, The Exorcist was a movie, as well as perhaps even the Red Phantom connection could have a particular type of connection to a movie, depending on how you want to view that, the Phantom itself versus the Red Phantom, but definitely is some type of a satirical comedy that the Zodiac is trying to do. Maybe no one would have found that funny except the author of this text. I will state again, this is an unconfirmed communication. And to give you my honest take on the subject, when I first looked at this, I was like, absolutely not. There's no way this is a real Zodiac letter. Then upon closer examination, I was like, there, there's some similarities with the handwriting. Yep, okay, I'll give, I'll give it that. But I mean, I'm noticing not a lot of hallmarks of Zodiac activity. One genuine, though, hallmark would be the Zodiac is getting very mad at the general public for not doing what he wants by saying that your poor taste and lack of sympathy for the public as evidenced by your running of the ads. I mean, that is similar to the way that the Zodiac called out people for not wearing Zodiac buttons. I'm very disappointed with the people of San Francisco for not wearing Zodiac killer buttons. And there's also a word crossed out and then rewritten. The Zodiac wrote consternation. At first it was spelled, looks like um somewhat correctly, although the N appears to be upside down in consternation. So then two Ns actually are written like U's and then they're, they're crossed out. But I mean, an upside down N all the same. They're crossed out and then the Zodiac wrote consternation. That is something that the Zodiac killer also did. Evidence of that would be the Melvin Belli letter, where things were crossed out. And something about that, though, just really, really looks intentional. And this has also been discussed in some other possible Zodiac fabrications, such as the 1986 letter, where the Zodiac was allegedly taking credit for a double murder committed on the Sacramento freeway. And it's like, it appears the first word is... um written correctly and then crossed out and then the same spelling has been written in but i i guess um that is something that is a little bit hard to say because the word is crossed out all the same the zodiac also crossed out the word written after express sirs i would like to express something is crossed out it looks like the word run maybe it was supposed to be expression or expressing and come to think of it, the word consternation does have um, one alteration. It says consternt as opposed to consternation. But the Zodiac also had frequent misspellings in his letters, so that is something that is horribly inconsistent. The Zodiac would cross out a word that's been misspelled and then write it correctly, yet sometimes he's blatantly misspelling words wrong, like 
I always go back to the one Christmas because it's the first one I learned about spelled Christ Mass. I mean, this could be possible, but just the way that it's presented just looks like such a flimsy attempt at a Zodiac fabrication. And, I mean, that's my two cents on the subject. If I had to bet my life on it now, I would say the Badlands card is not authentic, but we're talking like 51% no, 49% yes. I would not be surprised at all if it turned out indeed to be authentic. But this ties into, again, Theodore Roosevelt National Park. There's also a Badlands National Park, and Roosevelt was responsible for the creation of the National Park Service, as well as the entire fact that he branded himself as the cowboy of the Dakotas because he had spent time there. Roosevelt, of course, um, when he was running for office in New York, but he was trying to really make the Dakotas an important part of his political run. And then this goes to show you that there could be reasons why these places are chosen, that this wasn't just some opportunistic predator who saw a woman in a vulnerable situation. They exchange some words. He doesn't like what she says, so he murders her. This could be someone who was targeted deliberately. Maybe the victim wasn't 100% pre-chosen, but the Zodiac killer wanted to commit a crime along a mathematical line, on, along a particular angle, going all the way back to California. But which one do you side with? Do you believe the murder of Laura Jean Dugan from 1972 was the Zodiac killer? What do you think is the reason for the halt in Zodiac activity during that time? And what do you think about the Badlands card? Please put your ideas in the comment section down below. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And there is always blackboxnid88 over on Instagram. And I will see you there for the bonus podcast. Goodbye.